Hey up everyone, Magpie Gaming here. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the recent breakdown of the latest Talking Tarkov podcast. I recently did one of these where Nikita had done a podcast with Pastilli or rejoined his podcast or something like that. I can't remember. I did the breakdown of that. This was the one that was hosted by Battlestate Games with Nikita, and I think he had some of the streamers on. I'm not too sure. I didn't watch it myself. I know I'm really bad. I should start watching these things, but I just wait for the breakdown and then I do my own little video on it. But we've got a lot of information in this, a lot of information that's more relevant than the last breakdown video that I did. This one's got some pretty juicy stuff in, so I'm just going to go through each of the points as they come up. So first of all, we've got patch 12.5, which is due within the next couple of days. Nothing really too great in that one. There's no new content or anything like that. The only thing that's really noteworthy that's been added is that the quick heal screen will be available after a raid. I think it's either shown after a raid or you're able to go straight to the therapist and heal your character instantly for a price. I'm assuming that the price will change depending on what needs healing on your body and that just gets you quickly healed and back into the game as quick as possible. Another quick thing that they're going to do with that is that they're fixing the, uh, the frame drops that you get when you're ADS in certain optics. Hopefully that should be eradicated once 12.5 comes out. Then we move on to the big news that there will be a wipe with the patch after that which will be patch 12.6. When that will be we haven't been given a real definitive answer to that but definitely within the next couple of months I would say. They're saying that at the moment the patch notes for 12.6 are not ready but they are testing those things within 12.6 so it seems as though they're getting ready to go ahead and launch that. I would say it's probably going to be a couple of months away yet. They say there will be pre-wipe events with that wipe we will get three to four days of pre-wipe events and they will let us know the details of those closer to the game. The pre-wipe events are a good little time you know just to test out little things with the game the vast majority of people that i know play the game don't bother though they just stay away until the wipe's done and then they get straight back into the grind so after the next wipe the flea market you will only be allowed to sell items that have been that have found in raid status a run through status at the end of your raid will reset any found in raid status for the items so that creates quite a few problems for players at the moment but the whole landscape of the game will change once that's introduced so how people will be affected by that kind of depends on how you play the game i can see it being an issue for a lot of um casual players such as myself because basically what they're going to say now is when you shoot somebody and you go to loot them you have to work out whether you really want the gear that's on them or not because you're not going to be able to sell any of that stuff on the flea market it won't have found in raid status. Anything that is found on a player will not have found in raid status. So even if that player has found a red key card for labs and you pick it off them, it won't have found in raid status. So you won't be able to sell it for millions on the flea market. You will have to actually find that key card in the raid in the place where it spawns and not on a player that's taken it. So you're going to have to look at this player and say, do I want their armor? Will I be able to repair it? Will it be sufficient? I can't repair it and sell it on the flea market but I can repair it and sell it to a vendor so straight away a lot of those great big ticket items that you could loot from somebody and sell for good money on the flea market you're not going to be able to do that anymore you will of course still be able to sell that stuff to vendors but you're going to have to work out whether you really want to do that or not so I think it could create this uh, this state where you actually get a lot of your gear back after dying in a raid because people will think well I don't want that I won't be able to sell it for much what's the point of going into the overweight category of my character dragging my ass all the way out of the out the raid you know going really really slow to the extract of all this gear that's really going to not net me that much money so you're going to have to work out what you want from a person what you want to take obviously you're not going to be able to do a run through anymore now hatchlings like to do run throughs they don't really care about killing anybody they just want to get straight to a room get that stuff out and get it on the flea market not going to be able to do that anymore so i personally think that's a really good way of combating hatchlings you know you're going to have to do something in the raid to you know verify your raid status so that everything you have still has found in raid status at the end of it if you end up with a run through you're just going to have to sell that shit to the vendors so i think that's probably one of the biggest changes for 12.6 after that wipe it's going to create an immense amount of uh, talking 
talking points for the community and no doubt some of you guys will have comments to give on that do put them down below please i'd like to know what you think about these changes also with that wipe your save uh, your examining items will be saved and your weapon presets will be saved as well so those won't be wiped and i think the reason for examining items being saved is the fact that after a wipe if you go through the notebook on the escape from tarkov game you're able to examine everything and that will actually give you enough xp to raise yourself a couple of levels now after this you know, obviously you don't have access to the flea market until level 10 now so that's going to stop people basically living up their character for free you're going to have to go straight into raids to do that stuff from now on it is planned to rework loot on locations, its spawn locations and the loot pools themselves. Random places with loot are planned. Also, it is planned to introduce a feature so that the AI will protect places with valuable loot. Again, again another way of tackling hatchlings. The places where the good loot is, hatchlings like to run straight to them, get out. Now they're going to have scavs there protecting it. So again, it's to try and slow the progression of the game down, try and stop people just running in and taking stuff out. I am for that in a way but i must admit i do like to do the odd hatchet run myself it's how i fund things to begin with when i start playing the game i always seem to reach a plateau in escape from tarkov where it becomes self-sufficient no matter what happens in a raid i will usually make it out with enough stuff in certain raids to fund the next raid and i neither sort of make money or lose money but in the early game for the first couple of months at least i struggle with the money side of things i have to do hatchet runs to build that money up so this again is going to hit hit the sort of casual players but most of all it's going to hit people that are using bots to cheat in the game these are the people that are selling uh, in-game items for real world cash it's really going to hit them in the pocket which is good because they're not going to be able to just be simply taking these items out of the game and selling to them to people obviously this will still exist because people will still want to buy certain items but they're not going to be worth what they was before and obviously they won't have a found in raid status anymore so you won't be able to use them towards certain tasks and things like that so again slowing the progression of the game down i think we're definitely going to see this become more of a grind now than what it has been in the past steam audio the developers of hired ops which is a game i've never heard of it but apparently it does exist have asked bsg for a module to implement in their game so positioning already works really cool it becomes clear where the enemy is not just on the left or right but also behind and above your position or in front and below the game will have steam audio in 12 point six you can check this feature out already in hired ops the game never played the game not heard about it but apparently it is using a module that has been implemented in escape from tarkov in their game as well a new caliber will be added to the game the 0.45 acp and several weapons samples are planned for it in 12.6 there will be the colt 911 the ump will come later and the vector also almost the entire team of level designers is working on the new location streets of tarkov and we have some wire images of that that have been floating around in the background. Nikita confirmed that there will be up to 40 players on the map. Developers like the idea that you can get lost on location. The screenshot showed a helicopter flying near one of the high rise buildings. Is that going to be an extraction or is it just going to be something that's going to fly over every now and again? They don't really uh, elaborate on that too much. Maybe they did in the podcast but like I say I don't watch them. But yeah I like the idea of a map that can support 40 players but at the moment some of the maps struggle to support the players that they have on and i think the highest count is what 14 or 16 something like that so 40 players seems like they're pushing it a little bit and for something that looks like an absolutely massive map i do wonder on what the overall performance of that map is going to be but we'll have to wait and see when it comes out now as far as i know that map was penned in for 12.6 update they don't seem to say whether that is still the case or not in this breakdown maybe they did in the podcast i'm not too sure if somebody watched that and knows whether it will be in 12.6 or not please let me know in the comment section down below work is underway for new equipment for the scavs cheap bad looking something like survival gear not really sure what that is i think they're just going to change up how the scavs look and some of the gear that they have on them it is planned to rebalance thermal images after adding more of them there are new thermal optics coming in and they're going to be rebalanced apparently new boss for the shoreline location named sanitar not much of a fighter who uses stimulants also he will have various unique stimulants in his inventory one of them is mule for carrying weights and another with interesting effect called up up uh, yeah whatever that says i don't know <laughs> the development of the sanitar himself so 
we don't really know too much about this guy. I guess we will find out more in the coming weeks and months. But sounds like an interesting guy. We don't know how many people he'll have with him. Every boss has a few minions, so we don't know how many this guy will have. We'll just have to wait and see. Customs expansion is planned for 12.6. I recently did a video on this, and we have some new images of some of the buildings here. One of the new buildings would be the base for Rashala and his crew. So does that mean that he's not going to be in other parts of the customs map? Or will it be that it's just his base and it might have some good loot in i don't really know at the moment they also say that perhaps there will be an underground level at the new part of the location or at some building so it looks like they might be adding even more into customs but we'll just have to wait and see either in 12.7 or 12.8 it is planned to add a usp pistol and all three of its variants at once not really looked into the usp pistol but i'm guessing we'll get some renders of that at some point they've done demonstration video for more detailed customization of of weapons on the example of the Colt 11. There is a demonstration or a work in process video of the PPSH. The introduction of the PPSH in the game looks logical and realistic since there are many military warehouses on the territory of Russia where a large number of PPSH is stored. About cheats, every day from 1500 to 2000 dishonest players are banned. Approximately 50,000 dishonest players were blocked in March. This month is expected that there will be more of them. The team is constantly working with the Battle Eye developers. It seems like cheats are becoming a massive, massive problem. It did quieten down when Battle Eye came on the scene, but it seems that even with Battle Eye around, the cheats just seem to be more rampant than ever. I think more needs to be done. I really don't know what more they can do though, other than having Battle Eye and looking at things, you know, ways to slow the cheats down. Obviously, some of the changes that they're making to the game will stop people buying, get, uh, getting hold of in-game items and selling them for real-world cash, because in my eyes, that is cheating as well but it looks like they've got a real fight on the hands at the moment but that comes with the territory of having what is quite at the moment quite a popular game so it's just a trade-off at the moment between it being popular people wanting to play it and people wanting to cheat the game will have a report system both on suspiciously acting players and on all sorts of exploits bugs and obscene nicknames now i'm all for a reporting system in the game but there are two things that are going to come from this one is it's either going to be used when it shouldn't be used Used. so that's going to be occasions where you think you know you've had it you've been killed legitimately but you're pissed off about being killed so you decide to report the person anyway this could lead to false positives where people get banned when they haven't done anything wrong it could overload the system for bsg and they may just decide to start handing out bans here and there i do worry about this system being abused because the thing with bsg is that once the average jurors had their account removed there doesn't seem to be too many cases where people have got those accounts back they don't really seem to care whether you, you was in the wrong or not. They just decide to ban and you never really get any communication on whether you did, you know, what you did wrong or you, what you was thought to have done wrong. So I do worry about this system coming in and being abused, but I guess it's one of those things that needs to be added into the game so that we can catch more cheats. There are times where we are killed by people that are legitimately cheating and it is plain to see. There are other times where it's not so plain, so we're going to have to see how this one pans out. But I would expect that we're going to have the usual stories of people being banned when they hadn't done anything wrong. A lot of the times you read these in forums and on Facebook and you think, yeah, right, whatever. But sometimes they would have done anything wrong, you know, and they're just crying out to have their accounts unlocked. You know, it's their favourite game. They've been banned for absolutely no reason. And I think we're going to see an increase of that once this system comes in. But hopefully it will be a fair system and it won't get abused too much. Post effects filters will be in introduced in 12.5. Nvidia is premature disabled its freestyle filters they are now working again but they will be completely disabled starting from may the first support for nvidia highlights will also be disabled since this system was used by cheats so yeah a recent update to nvidia geforce experience removed the filters from the game but you was then able to put them back on a lot of people had a go at battlestate games for saying that they'd removed them but they hadn't it was just the update that prematurely stopped them working but they could get them working again afterwards i'm not really bothered to buy this pair Personally, I've never used the filters, I just use Tarkov the way it is meant to look. Yes, sometimes it looks awful, sometimes it looks very bland, but you know, that's just how it's meant to be. You play it the way it's meant to be played.
play it. So I don't have anything against people using uh, shading things to make the game look a little bit better, but obviously these can be abused to make people stand out a lot easier, etc. So, but they're going to put their own filters in, so you should still be able to make the game look better or the way you want it to look anyway. Barters for dog tags will continue to be added. Conditions for bartering with dog tags are planned to be revised, quantity levels, etc. About the cultists, Nikita refused to talk about it. The players will see for themselves when they're added in which patch, in any. So we're awaiting the cultists. These are a new band of scavs. Now obviously every location has a cult room. You see these in every location. You have the pentagram on the floor, the candles, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to have actual scavs that will be attached to those. But apparently from previous podcasts, they will only come out at night. You won't see them during the day in raids. They will only come out at a certain time at night. So it's going to be interesting to see what they look like, what kind of weapons they could have, what kind of um, sort of artificial intelligence they will use. Will they be just like normal scavs or will they be tough like raiders? We'll have to wait and see, but I'm looking forward to them being introduced into the game. Unity is scheduled to be updated to version 2019. This will give the devs even more tools for optimizing and developing the project. I don't expect us to see too many differences between moving from 2018 to 2019. Obviously moving from the old Unity to 2018 was a big task, but I think moving from 2018 to 2019 should be a lot smoother. So we should notice any too you know too many differences between that they work with spawns on the map all the time bugs are being fixed spawn points are edited constantly including the ones based on feedback from players the following patches will also bring changes for spawns fixing not really sure what's going to happen with those could be that players are more spread out could be we get some new spawn locations I have to wait and see with the wipe there will also be changes to the val and vss characteristics again i don't know the details of that one the val and the vss are going which I've recently started using quite a lot and I love them. Don't really know why I haven't bothered with them before. Obviously at long range they've got massive bullet drop but they are great in close quarters combat. Those could be replaced by the Vector though once that comes out because that looks an amazing close quarters weapon. In the post raid treatment you will be able to see statistics on damaged body of the parts, injuries, where, how and with what cartridge. More detailed reports may be added in the future. That is for the end raid screen where you'll be able to do a quick heal you'll be able to see what parts of your body was damaged what they was injured with just gives you a little more information it would be good to have a replay system to see where we was killed from i know that one is in the works for some point but it doesn't seem like it's very high on the priority list at the moment and i think we might be waiting quite a while for that customization of armored rigs and plate carriers is quite a big and serious feature most likely it will be added in patch 13 along with streets of tarkov ah so going back to where i was before wondering when streets of tarkov would come it's not going to be with 12.6 it is going to be with 0.13 so we are quite a way off seeing that map right now and the compass could possibly put in in 12.7 spoke about this in the last video they said the compass come Columbus? the compass was in the works actually what guys it will take we're not too sure will it be one that's strapped to your wrist will it be one that's visible along the top of your screen i don't really know right now but it'll be a good addition to the game to be able to pinpoint enemy better and relay that information to your teammates and that is it for this podcast breakdown i'm sorry these videos are getting really long but there's a lot of information coming out about the game right now we've got a lot of new features coming lots of new additions to the game so i'm looking forward to a lot of these things some of those changes though especially being able to sell things on the flea market you know that's going to change the game it's going to slow progression down that's a good thing in one way but we're all used to the game being how it is now and then it's going to change to being like that it could be a change that some people just don't like We'll have to wait and see. But there is a lot of exciting stuff coming to the game. I'm looking forward to Streets of Tarkov. It's a shame that it isn't going to be in 12.6 with the wipe. It looks as though it's maybe something that we might get towards the back end of the year. 0.13 seems a long way off right now. So, But yeah, I'm looking forward to that map. It looks huge. But in the meantime, we will get the extension to customs, which looks good. So yeah. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of some of these changes in the game. I know that some people are going to say, fuck this game, I am not playing it no more. Some people are going to say, yes, they're finally doing something about the cheats and the people that abuse the game. So let me know in the comment section what you think. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and listening. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Take care, stay safe, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.